On this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab, we're going to learn a six-step framework in order to pen test like a pro. Penetration testing is a science, and just like any other science, a consistent methodology has to be applied in order to achieve good results. The six steps we're going to learn today will allow you to find and exploit vulnerabilities much more easily and much more efficiently, and they'll also allow you to learn from your failures much easier as well. The six steps that we're going to cover today are pre-engagement, reconnaissance, vulnerability assessment, exploitation, post-exploitation, and reporting. Pre-engagement is the phase where we determine the type of device which we're interested in exploiting. A personal computer, a web server, or an Internet of Things device is going to have a drastic impact on all of the following steps. It's also important in this phase to consider the legal ramifications of performing an exploitation on that type of device, as this is the point of no return. The reconnaissance phase is where we use tools such as Nmap to scan local networks, or tools like Shodan to scan the entire internet to define devices that are potentially vulnerable to exploitation. Phase three is the vulnerability assessment phase. This is where we narrow down the number of devices that we gathered in phase two, reconnaissance, to devices which are known to be vulnerable to known exploitations. For this, we can use pre-built tools, or we can use our knowledge of outdated versions of software to find devices which are known to be vulnerable. Stage four, exploitation, is arguably the most exciting phase of a penetration test. This is where we use all the intelligence that we've gathered in the previous three steps and apply it to exploit our targeted device. Now this can vary widely based on the type of exploitation, but today we're going to be showing command injection. Stage five, post-exploitation, is only possible after a successful exploitation is completed. This is where we use our newfound access to the device in order to raise our privileges or gain permanent access to that device. The final stage of a penetration test is reporting. This is where we gather all the knowledge that we gained throughout the penetration test, organize it, and publish it so other people can be aware of this vulnerability. On this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab, we're going to be targeting a web server on our local network. We're going to be using Nmap for reconnaissance. We're going to be using Nessus for vulnerability assessment. We're going to be using command injection in order to exploit the device, and we're going to be using postenum in order to e elevate our privileges on that device. If you have any problems with this tutorial, check out the article linked in the description. All you need to follow this tutorial is a computer to work with. Let's get started. So for the reconnaissance stage, we're just going to use a simple Nmap scan. And we've covered Nmap before on Wonder How To, and you can check out the t our tutorials on wonderhowto.nobot.com. But I'm just going to show you a real quick one-liner that you can use to see if there's any open port 80s on your local network. So to do that, you just have to type in nmap and then S capital V for service scan. And then you're just going to um, select the range of IPs that you want to scan. So I'm going to do 192.168.1.1 and we're going to specify our subnet mask with slash 24. And then I'm going to specify port um, 80 and I'm going to go ahead and let that run. It's going to take a couple seconds because it's not a huge scan. And after a couple seconds, we can see all the devices which are attached to our local network and whether it's open, closed or filtered. So if it's open, that means that port that port 80 is open to use. If it's closed, that means obviously we can't use port 80 and then filtered means it may or may not be open, but we can't connect to it. Usually port 80s aren't filtered. That's usually something with SSH or other PCP ports, but today we're going to be interested in 192.168.1.146 and we can see that it's port 80 is open. Now this is a case where I actually have identified that my target is this exact device here, but you can use this reconnaissance stage to find any other port 80 device which has an open port 80 on your local network. So now that we've used some network reconnaissance to identify our target, we're going to go to the next stage, which is vulnerability assessment. So to do that, we're going to use a tool called Nessos, which has been covered on Nullbyte before, and that article will be linked in the description as well. So this is going to be assuming that you have Nessus already up and running on your computer. So to navigate to Nessus, you just have to open a web browser. I'm using Firefox and type in HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash localhost. And then you're going to specify port 8834. Your web browser might notify you that it could be a security risk to navigate to that address, but you're just going to let it know it's okay. And once you're here, the first time you use Nessus, you're going to have to set up an account. I already have. So I'm going to log in under Kofax. And then once you open the Nessus, the main screen is all the different scans that you've saved or have used previously on Nessus. I've already done the scan because it can take a while, but I'll just show you exactly how I set it up. So you just press this new scan button 
And then we're gonna do a basic uh, local network scan. We're gonna call it null byte test. This is for the video tutorial. And we're just gonna save it in the default folder. And you could specify the target that we identified, which is 1.146. Or you can also do it like we did in Nmap, just leave it at one and then specify the subnet mask 24. And this will basically leave these first three alone and then just cycle through that last number on our IP. So we're just gonna leave it like that. We're gonna save it. And then you'll see this null byte test and we can run it because it's never been run before. So you can launch it. And because this is a pretty big scan, it will take a while. So before I started recording, I ran the scan earlier. And as you can see, my Metasploitable virtual machine is taking up a lot of vulnerabilities. And there's some other devices on my network which might be susceptible to some vulnerabilities as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and see what this is vulnerable to. As you can see, it's using SSL. So there's some issues with SSL, which is usually associated with port 80. And so we know that if we navigate to the web app, then it's probably gonna be a vulnerability there. Command injection might be possible. So once you've identified that, yes, this target that I'm interested in is very vulnerable, you can carry on to the fourth step of the penetration test, which is the actual exploit, the exciting part. So my demonstration for a exploit is just gonna be a simple command injection. And so this is a part of Metasploitable 2's framework, which is the damn vulnerable web app, but this could be a substitute for any web app. It's just, this is just for demonstration purposes. So if for some reason a web app allows you to ping IP addresses, then you can take advantage of that and use the computer that you're using to ping and use it for whatever you want to do. In this case, I'm going to create a reverse shell. So I can just do a simple scan of the local host, which is 127.0.0.1. And if I submit that, it'll give me some information back. Now, if I specify this remote host and do an LS command, I'm not actually on this computer. I haven't logged into this computer at all, but I'm able to actually see the files on this Metasploitable computer without having to put a password in or anything. So because this is not the best way to interact with that computer, let's go ahead and create a netcat reverse shell. Now to do that, you're gonna to have to open up your terminal again. And we're gonna create a listening shell on our local computer. So to do that, you just type in NC for netcat, tack L for listening, and the port you wanna listen on. So I'm gonna do one, two, three, four. So now it's not gonna give you any feedback. It's just already running the second you do that. So now we're gonna specify a local host and then we're gonna do, um, I typed in the command earlier, as you can see to test, but you're gonna type in ncat, and then you're gonna specify the IP address of your local computer where you're sending this to. So I already know that IP is 192.168.1.243, and then you're gonna specify the port, which is 1234, and then we're gonna specify tack E for execute, and we're gonna create a terminal in the netcat shell. So you can go ahead and submit that. It might take a second or two. And then now if we go back to our terminal, you can see some funky stuff happen and actually closed. So let's actually try that again. Oops, not clear. We're gonna try listening again. And then we're gonna do 127, 168, 243. Yeah, that all looks right. And if you type in, it's still loading. So now if you do a who am I, you get this www tack data. And if we do LS here, we can see that these are the files actually on the Metasploitable computer. And now we basically have a complete shell. So we can ping from here now. And you can see it's getting this data and then I actually closed it. But from here, you can move on to the post exploitation phase of the attack. I'm going to be using a previous video we did on a tool called Postinum, which you can use to scan a local device and find any vulnerabilities that that device is susceptible to. So you can either raise your privileges or create a permanent backdoor into that computer. So assuming that you've been able to access a the target computer, either by creating a reverse shell with command injection or whatsoever, we can go ahead and install Postinum onto the target computer. But first, let's download it onto our computer first. And just for reference, this left black and green terminal is gonna be representing my local computer. And this blue and white terminal on the right hand side is going to be representing the target's computer. This is my reverse shell into that computer. So if you go ahead and navigate to the null by article for Postinum, and you can, if you scroll up to one of the first steps, actually, we can download Postinum by using this wget command, just downloading the script directly. And we're gonna go ahead and install it onto our local machine. Okay, and then now we can see that we have Postinum somewhere. There it is, postinum.sh. And let's go ahead and set up a uh, simple HTTP server. 
on port one, two, three, four. Okay. And then now if we go to our target computer and now we can grab the postinum.sh from our local machine. Oops. And you got to specify the port, of course. There we go. Now, if we look on this local machine, we have postinum. So we can go ahead and try to run postinum like we would a normal bash script. But more often than that, it's not going to work because it doesn't have execute privileges. So to do that, you just have to use chmod. Okay. And then now we can go ahead and try and run it like we did earlier. I'm going to go ahead and make this bigger. And as we can see, postinum is working now. So let's go ahead and I'll show off a couple features. So first we can see what versions of software are actually installed on this computer. So we can see if there's any outdated versions, which can be exploited to escalate privileges. So to do that, all you have to do is run postinum tech v, oops, dot sh, tech v. And we can see versions for MySQL, um, Apache, Java, and we can see if any of these are old, outdated, and really uh, vulnerable for exploitation in 2020 or whatever year you're doing this in. And then one more thing we can do is we can see what development tools are available to us on this computer, whether PHP is installed on this, whether Perl or Python, so we can know what kind of scripts can actually be applied to this computer. Oh, and you got to specify that it's a sh uh, bash file. And so we got some interesting information. We can see that Python, Perl, PHP, GCC, which is a um, C++ compiler, CC, which is a C compiler, and Nmap are all installed on this computer. So if we have a Python script that we are ready to deploy that we know is pretty effective at escalating user privileges, then we know that we will be able to deploy it onto this computer. See how files can be uploaded. We can use FTP, netcat, wget, which is what we use to actually get posted um, onto this computer. Curl, it's all that is available to us. And we can see what type of shell terminal tools are available to us. So VI and Vim are installed. Nmap is installed. Ruby, which wasn't specified earlier. And we can see where all of these um, environment variables are actually installed in case we want to mess with that. And yeah, so that's just the basics of things you can do with posting them to escalate your privileges in the post exploitation stage of a penetration test. If you like this tutorial, be sure to check out our website where we have hundreds of free articles and videos, as well as premium paid content like the Ethical Hacking Certification Bundle, which features pen testing with OWASP Zap, WordPress hacking and hardening, and the CompTIA Cybersecurity Analyst prep course. Check out the link in the description below. While performing all of these steps to completion may seem a little overzealous, for any complicated task, such as pen testing, it's important to have a proven set of steps that you can fall back on in case things go awry. And I should remind you that what we showed off today was just one demonstration of these six steps. Your experience with these six steps may vary widely, based on the type of device that you're targeting or the type of vulnerability that you're trying to exploit. Again, if you have any problems following this video tutorial, you can check out the article linked in the description. If you have any ideas for a future video, Hit me up at Twitter at Nick Gottschall. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.